Hello and welcome to SCL1 TNO Knitting Project Podcast. My name is Sharon and I'm coming to you from Surrey in the UK where I live with my family, three cats and a dog, any of which can interrupt me today. Um, this is episode 11 and it is Sunday the 17th of March 2019. Welcome to any new viewers, welcome back to any returning viewers. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is my podcast that's recording my rolling rotation of whips that I do one on a different day each week over a six day rotation. Um, it'll come a bit more self-explanatory as I go through it. You can find me as SCR1TNO on Instagram and Ravelry and my email is SCR1TNO at Outlook.com if you have any questions you want to contact me. Um, I realise I forget to say that pretty much every week so it's in big bold letters on my show notes show notes there are show notes they will be in the drop down bar below the video there's a little triangle if you press on that it should give you all the links to everybody i talk to in the show if i miss anything um if you want to message me leave a comment message me on instagram that's actually not the best way to contact me either leave a comment below or um email me or you can contact me on ravelry instagram if unless i'm following you it's difficult to see the messages so it's actually probably easier if you just either leave a comment or message me on Ravelry or email me. So yeah, that, that's my intro, finally. I've had two goes at it. This is the third attempt. <laughs> it's going to be one of those days. So day one is socks and I've got a fair few sock whips at the moment. So I'm banned from casting on any more new socks now until I've got some of these finished. But my first ones I worked on were my Waiting for Henry socks, which is a pattern by Tabitha Gandhi of the Hey Sister podcast. And the yarn is um, To All A Good Night, which was a sock set that Kay Jones from the Bakery Bears did, which is so pretty. And this is one I finished, just to give you an idea of what they look like. And then this is how far I got this week. That's really scruffy. Let, let's show you the, the, the not so scruffy side. There we go. I got down to halfway down through the pattern. Now, what I'm doing is I want a box of socks for Christmas. My idea is I have 31 pairs of socks, but I don't think that's going to happen. I've got, I think this is pair 10, if I remember rightly. So this is pair 10. And that's as far as I got. I've got the cuff done and started the colour work. To be fair, I've only got one more repeat of this bit and the a stripe to do and then that's the colour work done and then I can whiz through the rest so I worked on those I'm using that is a new DPN case from Craft House Magic that hasn't made it into the postman section because I'm using it already and I love Ellie's DPN cases the needles I am using are Knitter's Pride's they are melodies and they are symphonies. So they, I'm using a size larger for my colour work. So these are three millimetre needles. I normally do my standard socks on 2.5 um, over a 60 stitch stitch count. And because I'm on the colour work, I've gone up an ease needle size and it's worked perfectly on the other sock. So I'm really pleased with that. And then the yarn. This is fab red, pinky red, which has got a sparkle. I don't know if you can see the sparkle. It all sparkles. That's the red. And then came with two minis of the green. And the yellow also sparkle. So I'm really pleased with these. I'm really looking forward to having those done. And then they'll go in my tin of Christmas socks, which I'll show you when I put them in the tin. And that is all hanging out literally hanging out because there's yarn everywhere hanging out in my winter animals bag by busy pottering which i might keep as my christmas sock bag because it is kind of christmasy without it being over the top christmasy so, yeah, love that bag so that was that one and then i'll talk about more about it in kind of life stuff at the end um 
I had a car journey, so I had car knitting that I could do. And all of my sock whips at the moment, <laughs> including this one now, are at turning the heel stage. <laughs> and as much as I can normally turn the heel in a car, um, I wasn't going to have enough time. It wasn't that long a journey. So I cast on a new sock. And who wouldn't cast this on? How fab is this? This is by Dragon Hill Studio. And it is a rainbow colourway. I'm, I'm really sorry. I don't know the name of it. I will find the ball band and look it up. The ball band has gone, I think. I think the ball band has gone. Yeah, the ball band's gone for a little walk. I think it's still downstairs on the sofa. So that's as much as I did. Car knitting from Surrey to Essex and back. It's quite a bit, quite pleased with that. But I'm probably about three repeats away from turning the heel again. <laughs> and I'm using 2.5 millimeter licky needles. And then this is the cake. And this is how it comes. It comes ready caked up. The yarn is just so fabulous. This apparently is so fabulous. I bought two of them by accident so I gifted one to my dear friend um, Laura from the Lonely Knitter podcast because she really wanted one so she's got one so we're going to be sock twins at some point she's my um, adopted yarn daughter because although I have three daughters none of them are interested in knitting my eldest does crochet um, and she's in the middle of crocheting a sheep at the moment, a tough sheep. And I'm hoping that when she finishes it, I can show it on the podcast. I tried to get her to come on to talk about it, but she won't. <laughs> so yeah, that's my sock. It's fab. I love those colours. So my emergency cast on of sock. Um, so I need to turn the heel on one of these whips so that I'm just whizzing up the foot for the next time I need emergency sock knitting. So this is hanging out in my Caroline Love to Sew bag, which I got as um, her surprise Christmas box, which she did with some minis from Eddie of Craft House Magic. And absolutely adore it, and it's the perfect size for popping in the emergency skein of sock yarn. Yeah, absolutely love it. <laughs> perfect. Little sock sack, and I love sheep. I love sheep. So yeah, so that was day one socks. So day two is my shawl day, and at the moment I'm doing the Dust of Snow Wrap by Curious Handmade Helen Stewart in my minis I got in my advent calendar from Hedgerow Yarns. And I'm going to show you the yarn first just because it's on top. So I'm using mohair from her, and I've had to go into my third skein of mohair because my gauge really is that all off. But luckily, Jane of Hedgerow Yarns had a spare skein that I could buy. Then this is the current mini, which is gorgeous. It's such a spring, spring greeny colour. I love it. So that's the mini I'm using. And I'm about 85% through. So I'm coming to the end of this project, which will make me both happy and sad. Happy because I'm looking forward to actually having it. But sad because I've enjoyed knitting it so much and it is just taking forever to come out of the bag. Now, did a fair bit on this this week. She says trying to detangle it all. So, that, where is it? That is where I was. And now I have done all of... The rest of that pink section, all of this beautiful, beautiful daffodil yellow section, all of this variegated, very soft speckled variegated section, and I'm just fading in the grain there. Now, these, I'm because I'm now in the lace section. I've got stitch markers because I can't do lace without stitch markers and these were part of the flower power fund stitch markers and that has also got a DPN cosy on it which are sheep amazing sheep 
from the lovely Ellie of Craft House Magic. And I mean, A, I'm addicted to sheep, and B, I love Ellie stuff, and I particularly like her deeping cozies. And this had started to fall off its needles because it's so big. I was like, it definitely needs. And I obviously, I use my deeping cozy for circulars. And they stay in there really well. I mean, they're not coming out. They really are not coming out in it at all, which is great. So yeah, and it's getting, I mean, it's getting super long, super big. And it just keeps on going. I absolutely adore it. Cannot wait to have this as a finished object. I think I want my own colour. I have the pattern down here. What is the green colour? Bear with me. Colour 21. So I'm, yeah, really rocking along on that now. You never know. It might be a finished object by next week. I don't think it will. I think it'll be. I don't think it falls on a good day next week in the knitting rotation to get it finished. I think I think it finishes. I think it um, falls on one of the days where I'm out in the evening. So it's not going to get finished next week. Maybe the week after. Maybe be in. Maybe an FO by the end of the month. That would be cool. And then I've got to work out what I'm going to cast on as a shawl next. That's exciting. So that's how my knitting project works. Once I've cast off something on a day, so day two is shawl day, once I get this cast off, I can cast on a new shawl, which is really exciting. So that's how I work through my whips. Um, it does work. It does. It just seems like slow progress, and I do worry that I'm showing you the same thing every week. But hopefully, it's a little bit different. I mean, certainly with that, it was a different colour that went in it, and it has a new needle cosy on it. I'm trying to get it back in. It's ba this bag is beginning to get a little bit small for it. It does all just about go back in, just nearly. I might need. I've actually still got the minis in here as well. I might need to take the minis out. That might make life a little bit easier. But so this is a bag by the lovely Jules, so sweet Violet, part of a kit she did with my wonderful friend Kelly from No Family Yarns and it is a Christmas bag and as soon as I get this wrap finally off the needles that's going away till next Christmas. <laughs> I love it. So yes that's day two, shawl day. So day three is garment day and it is hanging out in this giant bag by Busy Pottering that she made for me for a blanket but is currently housing my penguono and all the yarn that goes with it and oh so i am doing the penguono by stephen west there we go that's what it looks like and oh here we go quite exciting because I got through right, that's my marker for which side is the right side so there should be a sheep here too somewhere where's the sheep I've lost the sheep marker there's the sheep marker so I finished the first, the, the second front, so that's the sheet marker there. Can you see it? There we go. And I've finished the front. I think this is the left front. And then I did, oh, here we go. It's caught up. It's caught up. Then I did the shoulder, which is that panel there. And it really excitingly, I have started picking up for the sleeve. I've done the, it's sort of a short row shaped sleeve. Um, I'm not gonna give out way too much of the construction. But yeah, so I've started the sleeve, which is really exciting. So I've got loads done on that on this this week. And again, another DPM cozy from Craft House Magic. Because again, I'm losing stitches. 
So this is all yarn by Jenny of Woody Goodness Yarns. And that's going to be my sleeves. So excited. I've got the second sleeve and the like neck band stroke bottom welt to do and then this will be I mean it's going to take forever to sew in all the ends there is so many look at all the ends that fab um so yeah it's gonna take me a while to do all those to be fair um but that then that'll be done so I mean there's no way this is gonna be done by the end of March but might be done by the end of May, April which is just as well because I have the next thing I want to cast on I have in planning so day four is my corner to corner crochet blanket day slash mitts for my friend Kelly. Um, they were on my mystery blanket rotation, but now I'm actually knitting on my mystery blanket. I don't have time to do it on that day. So I'm alternating between my crochet blanket and Kelly's mitts. This week it's Kelly's mitts. So Kelly, if you're watching, could you look away now, please? <laughs> and I am doing the Marriott mitts by Skeindeer. And I'm doing them in John Arbor knit by numbers. And I'm doing number one, which is the black, John Arbor number one. It's a DK. And number 19, which is the red. So that's the back of their labels. That was upside down. That's the back of their labels. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh dear. And I am using these needles. This, this is going to be one of these really useless pieces of information. I believe they're higher hires. I believe I might have the actual bit that goes with them in here. Yeah, they, they're not those. There is no way they are higher, higher bamboo circular knitting needles. That's really funny. Let's try that one. They might, however, be higher, higher stainless steel circular knitting needles. And they are a 3.5 mil. is what I'm doing them on. That was funny. I'm, I'm guessing they're the bamboos. I'm not using those. They're just in the bag. They've come along for the ride. And this is has how far I've gone. So if you're still watching Kelly, now you have to look away. All right. So that's where I was. This is the palm. So I was there. So I've done that bit. I'm not going to be too specific so that Kelly can still listen, even if she's not watching. So I've gone up to there and then that's the front. Isn't that lovely? I made life slightly difficult for myself in as far as on the chart, the black part on the chart is actually the red on the glove. So that's messing with my head a few times. I've only actually got it wrong on one row, well, one half a row, so that wasn't too bad. But um, yeah, it was like that was a sensible idea. But it had to be this way around, it wouldn't have worked the other way around. That is February's stitch marker from Corner of Craft. It's so pretty. Yeah, so that's the mitt. And until I've got those done, I'm going to alternate them with my corner to corner blanket. And they are hanging it out in my black cat bag from Busy Pushing. I love the bell on this. It reminds me, I've got a black cat called Luna. And he has a bell like that. Yeah, love it. So yeah, that's my my day four at the moment. This week was the mitts. So next week it will be the corner to corner crochet blanket, which actually is today. So I'm kind of looking forward to editing the podcast and just having a relaxing Sunday because it's been a bit of a week, which I'll tell you about towards the end. So that's day four. So day five is mystery blanket day and this is a mystery blanket I'm doing by Debbie Abrahams she does them every year 
Um, I've done a lot of them and this is it's hanging out in my this is my working bag for it it's in a bigger bag as well because there's a lot of yarn but this is the one I keep the actual square I'm working on in and this is a Swan Lake bag my bags of awesome granny uh, I absolutely adore it it's so pretty and I will show you the squares I'm doing on the first podcast of the following month so March's squares which I'm doing now I will show you on the 1st of April however there is a good chance this month I won't have all marches done by the 1st of April because I've um, I, there are a lot of squares and I haven't had a lot of time to knit on it so we'll, we'll see how that goes if I get really really behind on it then I'll just show them as I'm going along but at the moment I will show you these on the first podcast in April there we go so yeah that's my day five is Debbie Abraham's mystery blanket day so day six is my scrappy project day and that's hanging out in this lovely tote bag that I've got which has got yarn balls on the front can't remember who it's by and I've had it for years but it is housing my hexi puff blanket which has grown miraculously in size since Laura from the lonely litter podcast kind of gifted me half of one because she wasn't going to work on it anymore and I was like I'll give it at home it can join with mine which it has so that one there that side there most of that is hers that one's mine sorry I have just done something that I know that um, I think it's Helen from the Crafty Toes hates which is don't leave it on the screen long enough for you to see it so that's Laura's side let's leave it on a little bit longer and then that's my side and then it's beginning to join together so these are the ones that I did all the ones with stitch markers on if you can see are the ones I did this week so that one and then all of these I did this week now the day this the day this was in rotation was one of my days where I do something in the evening so I didn't have a huge amount of time to knit on it um, but you can see it's slowly joining up my side to Laura's side it's just so exciting so once I've got it all squ squared off I'm not sure that's the right word for it sort of joined up and so it's one big piece and it's not flappy because this bit at the moment is still flappy it hasn't sort of joined on properly yet <clears throat> once I get it all joined up properly I'll start going round and round the whole thing but for the moment I'm filling I'm filling in the gaps so I'm going to try and fill in those gaps at the bottom next but yeah it's so exciting I love it and I'm going to use it on my camp chair when I'm camping in the summer which we do a lot of um, to help pad it because all the padding's gone in my camp chair but otherwise the camp chair is fine so I'm going to use it as a cover on my camp chair so I need to get on with it really I'm not sure whether it will be for this summer or next summer and I'm using Knit Pro needles for this I'm using a, this is a little circular needle holder also from Craft House Magic Ellie it's all about your bits today and my needles are Knit Pro Symphonies and Knit Pro Carbons because I do everything on two circulars which at some point I will do a little video about how I do that now with my scrappy projects they're in a rotation all of their own um, and they're rotating between my bits and bobs blanket which I showed last week my hexi puff blanket and next week it will be my stitching time blanket so they're on a little rotation all of their own but working on everything a little bit actually does eventually get it done um, it's something that I have found and indeed the last time I did my project did my rotation which was a couple of years ago um, everything finished at once I had a load of new cast ons it was great <laughs> but um, I don't think that's going to happen this time because these scrappy projects certainly are very long term projects oh so yeah day six is scrappy project day so I also do a cosy memory blanket and I do a square on that every morning um, sort of to start my day if you like and that's in 
my seaside bag from Busy Pottering, which I love. It's definitely one of my favourite bags. This project gets a lot of love. It's got um, signature needles. And as you can see, I didn't quite get the small square finished. I was halfway through it. So I have done... Right, those two. It makes more sense if I hold it like that, but yeah, there we go. So that one, that one, and that one this week. And then on the other side, those two. Now these are minis by the lovely Libby of Needle and Fred, as in F-R-E-D. And this is the one I'm working on today. So pretty. And she does advent style mini sets, which you can choose um, 12 or 24, 10 grams or um, 20 grams. And she just, she does them, she dyes them to, I don't know if she dyes them to order, whether she's got the sets up, I think she dyes them to order. But you, it means you can buy them any time of the year. They're not just for Advent. You can buy them. And they're really good value for money. Um, and her customer service is second to none. I've been chatting to her all week this week. She's doing me another set. And um, because at the moment she's still got this set in stock. Let's look at that one. Is that pretty? Because she's still got this one in stock. She's, um, I'm hanging on for a week. And she's going to do a new one for me. Which is brilliant. Such good service. And I'm using this, it's um, it's a 24 set and it comes in a beautiful in a beautiful brown cardboard box and they come in little packages. There we go, that's one of her little packages. Needle and thread. And so it's lovely if you're treating yourself to something. Now, anybody who's watched this podcast will know that my husband's working away from home at the moment and he is in Burma. Now, I bought a 24 um, package one and when it was 24 days till he came home I started day one so I'm counting down in coming back with little packages of yarn so it's kind of a nice treat to he when he comes home and that's what I've used it for but I guess you could use it for anything count down to your birthday um, anything really summer holiday buy it for your summer holiday um, yeah so it, it, it's re a really good idea and as I said, she's really lovely. I've been messaging her this week. She's really sweet. So that's Libby of Needle and Fred. And I will link it in the show notes. So I will link her shop in the show notes. Bless her. So yeah, so this is my cosy memory blanket. It is marching on now. Haha, <laughs> being March it would be. So yeah, cosy memories. I don't really want to drop that corner because it's got my yarn in it. I shall finish that whilst I'm editing my the podcast. I was watching it back last week and the number of things I said I was going to do whilst editing the podcast was hysterical. I was like, I don't think you can really do all those. I mean, it takes a while to edit a podcast, but not that long. So yeah, that's my cosy memory blanket. So that's the end of the actual knitting content. Um, I've got a little bit of post um not a huge amount this week but a little bit and first of all i have got well i'm actually get a copy of the summer tweed collection which is the book i was talking about a couple of well last week and the week before Rowan summer tweed and that's what i've knit this jumper in which is the rose hip sweater because i just could not find my copy um, and I really wanted to knit another rose hip. I was just looking at it going, oh, maybe you're a basil, but it's not, it's definitely rose hip. There we go. I had to struggle to show you this without giving the pattern away, so. Ah, oh, actually, do they have big pictures? They do have big pictures. That will make my life easier. There we go, that's the rose hip. So I want to make another one of this, and this is in summer tweed, um, which is sort of a worsted way, worsted slash um, Aran. Oh yeah, that's 
when I want to. I have quite a lot of Aran in my stash, so I want to um, want to knit that. And that's by Kim Hargreaves, and it's Rowan. And so I've got this on eBay, so there you can get hold of them. This is my newer one, and it's seamless knit sweaters. by Marie Green. I got this on Amazon. I'll link it in the show notes. And I want to knit if I can find it. This is the only problem. I should have marked this before. I said I was going to mark it. I want to knit every sweater in this book. I love it. Most of them are DK. I think I saw one fingering weight sweater at some point. I want to knit that one. I really like that. So it's called the Offshore Cardigan. And it's that one there. And it's sort of a waterfall front cardigan, cardigan when it's undone. But if I can show this without showing any of the pattern. She says trying to cover it all up. There we go. That bit there. It closes across at the front. And I love that construction when you've got that little like button here. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and I've asked Kelly, my dear friend Kelly of Lay Family Yarns, if she will dye up her Atlantis colourway for me on DK. Because that's my favourite colour of hers. And I want to make that. So that, when I've got my Pinguino finished, that is going to be my next cast on. Um, and this book is lovely. It's got so many lovely patterns in it. The... I will definitely knit and it because they're DK as well um, I've got quite a lot of DK single skeins so I'm going to have a go with that pullover I showed you the striped one I'm going to get fading it because I think that would make a really pretty fade so yeah that's what it's called it's seamless knit sweaters in two weeks I think that's optimistic given my knitting rotation but I'm sure if you just did it monogamously you could but yeah love it so yeah that that made its way into my house this week Okay, so a little bit of stash enhancement. This is Brief Sugar Yarns in their 7525. And it's a couple of mini sets that she's released. And that's the first one. This is a Brights set. Which I absolutely adored. So pretty. And then this one, which is a pastel set. Again, isn't that lovely? so pretty I love this I think they're perfect Easter colours my face at this set is going to be scrappy socks the other set I'm going to put in my blanket I mean to be honest I'll probably have enough to do scrappy socks and put some in my blanket but these are definitely going to be scrappy socks which I'm not allowed to cast on for quite a while so next up is my lovely friend Jane Hedgerow Yarns put her new set out this is set 31 and I've got some tiddlers to go with it that one and that one loads of minis are these going into my stitching time blanket oh, I absolutely adore her yarn I'm just thinking oh, what a lovely pair of scrappy socks they'd make I'm, I'm really tempted just to forget the project I'm never going to knit anything else I just knit scrappy socks for the rest of my life I'm not going to do that but it's very tempting especially when you get minis like this so yeah, that's the lovely Jane of Hedgerow Yarns. And then I had a delivery from Giddy Yarns, lovely Helen, of these two, which I adore and are... Well, I'll be honest, I bought them for tonals for socks, for heels, toes and cuffs. But I like them so much together that I might do something together with them. Jury's out on that one. And she's just released a beautiful spring line, which is absolutely gorgeous. And I've got one of each colour of that coming. Because um, I definitely want to make something large with that. But yeah, really pretty. So yeah, that's my stash enhancement this week. That's it for the knitting content this week. Um, I've got a few podcasts I've watched. I have watched The Crafty Toads, which I adore. They're so funny. Um, the Lonely Knitter, Laura, um, who is my yarn daughter. 
um, she has released a few patterns this week so I will link to them in my show notes go check them out she's such a talented designer um, Geordie Knits the lovely Katie been really enjoying watching her podcast Bad Wolf Girl um, she dropped an episode this week again I mean, her designing is incredible her colour work sweaters that she's made I is it called um, a his Hogwarts or History of Magic? It's just lovely, I love it. Um, Skained it and watched her last night. Um, the lovely Grace of Babbles Travelling Yarns, who is um, vlogging EYF as we speak, which has been great watching that. And lovely Ellie of Craft House Magic, she had an episode, she's also off to EYF, um, which is the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Um, wish I was going. Um, maybe next year. So the only thing I've got left now really is life stuff. Um, which I've nicked that title. I'm sorry from Tiffany and Ethan of the Woolen Homestead <laughs> podcast. I have completely nicked that. Um, I have a herd of elephants coming up the stairs right now. There we go. <laughs> so life stuff. Um, I get my new glasses this week. That's exciting and slightly scary. Um, so maybe next weekend you'll see me wearing them on the podcast which would be great because I won't have to peer at the screen then to see what my uh, time is and my recording time um, using my new journal my my new bullet journal which has got my podcast notes in um, loving it it is actually keeping me on track and making me less likely to forget things I'm sorry about the shadow the sun has really come out now um, my poor youngest had to have a new car this week. I say poor youngest. I mean, she got a new car, so not so much, not so poor like youngest. Um, but her, she's got a car that's pretty much older than she is. She's 18. It's, it's 18 years old. And um, its brakes had completely gone. It was going to cost an arm and a leg to fix. And we were like, it's, it's not worth it. Um, the car, it, the brakes are going to be worth more than the car. So we've hunted around to got her a new car, which she got yesterday. I did feel a bit sorry for her. The weather yesterday was atrocious driving it back. And I live in Surrey, and this is where the sort cast on came on. I live in Surrey, and we drove to Essex to collect it. So it's only an hour. It was only an hour away. It wasn't too bad. But the weather, it's so windy over here at the moment. And we had wind and driving rain. And when you're driving a brand new car, and you're only 18, that's a bit of an ask. Uh, especially when you've got to go over the very tall bridge of the Dartford River crossing to get home. Um, it was an experience for her, bless her heart, but she knows her new car really, really well. And of course, they didn't give her petrol either. So the first thing we had to do was go and find a petrol station, which was in the centre of a busy town. <laughs> I said to her when we got home, well, you certainly know how to drive the car now. <laughs> bless her heart. So that's Meg. She got a new car this week. So that, that's kind of taken up between looking for new car between putting her car in to get the brakes fixed because she was going to drive to Bristol and we were like you can't drive your car to Bristol with brakes like that we've got to get them fixed got the coat we were like no you need a new car so that's taken up a fair proportion of my week has been sorting out the car and it's not just the car it's the insurance and everything else that goes with it so time consuming so that's where the Dragon Hill socks came on um, I worked this week which is pretty normal I work so I can buy yarn um, my hubby would disagree with me he would like a contribution towards the bills but I work so I can buy yarn um, otherwise I'm giving up work so I can knit yarn I won't be able to buy it anymore admittedly um, <laughs> but <laughs> I've probably got enough yarn to last me a little while even if I did that um, and then last night I had a lovely night out with my brother um, we don't get together that often he only lives the next town over but you know what it's like life basically but we made the effort and um, I went over to see him last night when in actual fact he came and picked me up which was even nicer and um, we had Chinese and we chatted and we chatted late into the night so if I've got bags under my eyes that's why I was had a very late night with my brother last night but that was wonderful there's um 17 years between me and my brother and he had a very different childhood to me and he was chatting about all about his childhood and where he used to live because my family comes from Norfolk and he was sort of using Google maps on the photos to show me where he where he grew up and it was fascinating listening to his stories um it was a bit like an episode of heartbeat mind you he'd set fire to hay bales with a policeman's son i mean goodness only knows i'd try to think what he got up to but um 
yeah he he and I, I grew up here in Surrey so we had very different um, childhoods but it was great great evening good fun great food great company so that was my night last night so I'm a bit wrecked today <laughs> no alcohol thankfully <laughs> otherwise it would have been totally wrecked so that was my week next week is actually going to be a really I'm really looking forward to next week next week's gonna be a good week um we're doing I'll talk to you more about it next week in life stuff actually but we're doing an emergency services night for guides next week and we've got police fire and ambulance coming and I think it's just gonna be so much fun so I'm really looking forward to that um so yeah it's a good week good week coming up now I'm obviously finishing off with getting my new glasses on Friday so anyway I hope you all have a really good week next week whatever you're doing and I will see you next weekend take care